Hello kids, I'm Lady Arlene and welcome to my show called Hello My Friends. Hello My Friends is a cultural program where I take all you children around the world right from your classroom and I'm going to teach you a couple of important facts about Japan. Uh, now we're going to learn how to say hello and goodbye in Japanese. Okay, so you repeat after me after I say how to say hello. It's konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Now your turn. Very good. And then when we say goodbye, it's sayonara. Sayonara. Now you say it. Very good. Okay, so now let's just say it one more time so we don't forget it. Okay? Okay. Konnichiwa. Sayonara. Yay, we did it. You know, when you start traveling around the world, it's such a nice gesture to be able to greet the natives. It's, it really is. So uh, now you know how to say hello and goodbye in, in Japanese. You'll have to go to Japan now. Okay, so let's get started. I want to share with you some beautiful dolls that the Japanese love, and they, they love to talk about their dolls and display their dolls. And I don't know if you can see them. They're here in this corner, but they, they're very colorful. Uh, they make great souvenirs. They make great gifts. Uh, some of them are made out of carved wood and uh, stuffed straw and porcelain. And this one here looks like a porcelain doll. They're very pretty and they can get very expensive. And the Japanese are so proud of them, they want to display them, and they do, in these gla big glass cases. So, um, have you ever been into a Japanese restaurant or something associated with J Japan? Uh, you'll, you might see these big, beautiful uh, glass cases and a beautiful doll on display. Yeah, they're pretty. You're so pretty. Okay, now, let's talk about a chopstick. Now the chopsticks originally was called Zhu, Z-H-U. And um, it was the Chinese ancestors who discovered the chopstick. They were using their hands. Yes, indeed. And did you know that it's very bad manners to lick the bottom of the stick or clank it on your plate or your, your, your dish and your, your um, anything on the table or the gla on your glasses? No, it's a big no-no, very bad manners. And when you uh, give a gift to a married couple, a newlywed, you are wishing them good luck on having a son. And there are millions and millions of chopsticks used yearly in Japan. All right, now we're gonna talk about the clothing. Now, the Japanese word for clothing is called kimono. It's what I'm wearing. It's almost like a robe and you can put it on, it's very comfortable and you can just tie it with a sash. And here's a very pretty one. I'm hoping you can see all the, the, the print on it. And so, over the years, the kimonos have changed. They, they became more, uh, uh, more design, they, they put more design into it, more color. Uh, more artwork. It's just, and it became so beautiful that they didn't want to wear them every day anymore. They wanted to save them. So they started to reserve them for special occasions like um, weddings and funerals and uh, special events and what other thing? Tea ceremonies. And uh, it, they uh, really love their kimonos. And I love mine too. So, anyway. All right, oh, and this is a uh, sash. Well, we call it a sash. They call it an obi. Oh, there's another word for it called um, kasithratai. And they put it around themselves like this. And I'm gonna show you how they tie it in the back. They make a beautiful, beautiful bow. And do you know that it's just as popular for the men as it is for the women? The men love to wear these. Okay, see that? Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now I can show you a little picture here. Just such fancy outfits. I just love it. Can you see that now? There you go. Alrighty. 
you can make a nice coloring page on all those designs. All right. Now, now after the clothing, we are going to talk about instruments. Here's an instrument called a shamisen. It is the most popular instrument in Japan. And it uh, it's, resembles a banjo, and it has four strings, and it's very, very old. And I'm having to fix the pegs on it. The pegs are missing on it. And I will get that fixed, so when I come into your classroom to uh, perform, I'll have it all done, and, and we'll be able to, I'll be able to play, and we can all hear what it sounds like together. And here's some other instruments I have. This one here is very interesting to me. It's called a San Exion, right here, this one right here. And it doesn't have frets on it, it's fretless. So you see my guitar, and see these, these frets that go across the bar, the neck? Those are called frets, and this is a fretless. And I'll show you a picture here. You can see better on this one. Shh, let's see, right there, you see that? And you can always tell how many strings it has by its pegs. See these things right there? You count them. One, two, three. Okay, so that means it has three strings. And that's how you can tell how many strings an instrument has. Like, check this out. This is my guitar, and it has, let's count the pegs. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six strings. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Okay, so what are we going to talk about now? The beautiful fans. Look at their fans. They have so many different color fans and shapes and just beautiful. Look at this uh, beautiful Japan, Japanese lady that they have on her. And this one here is so beautiful, so colorful. It looks like a waterfall and some mountains. Yeah. Okay, so the fans, let's see, what about the fans? The fans are, were used by the warriors as a form of a weapon, and the actors, they also use them as, uh, uh, when they're dancing and performing, and the children use them as a toy. And the, uh, the, let's see, they are also used uh, as a religious, in religious ceremonies and different events, and they come in all different colors, patterns, and sizes. And it's always nice to fan your face on a hot, hot day. Okay. Now, let's talk about the national flag. Flag, where are you? Here we go. The national flag, it is a white triangle with a big red dot in the center. Okay? So, and it, uh, it represents um, the land of the rising sun. It has the uh, oldest lyrics to it and it's the shortest national anthem song and it's called Kimi Gayo. Okay. Alrighty. Now we're gonna have oh yeah let's talk about this little plaque here it represents uh, their religion. I don't know if you've ever been able to see this kind, this man, this jolly man, and he's got a big tummy. And see this picture? That okay. So this is their religion. It's called Buddhism. It's an Indian religion, and it's not a god. And what it is, it's it's just like they they exchange their personal experiences with each other, and. Um, And it's very, it's very popular in the Asian countries, Japan, China, Thailand, Cambodia, um, whatever, all those different Asian countries out there. So, oh, what's next? We're getting, we're coming down. Oh, this is a lantern. Isn't this pretty? Oh, right away, a lot of color. It's beautiful. And it has a light in it, and they use this. They string them across a line or a rope, whatever, and whenever they go have a uh, carnival. This is the Japanese carnival, and this is real big. And it's all lit up, so nice. Okay. 
No, I have to look and see. Oh, here's some important facts about uh, uh, Japan. Do you know how many islands there are? How much? 600? Oh, oh no. I thought about a thousand maybe, but I was way off. 6,800 islands in Japan. Is that possible? Well, I guess it is. Anyway, and uh, they have over 3,000 McDonald's hamburgers. Now, if you go, really, that's the truth. If you ever go to Japan and you're looking for a McDonald's, you won't have any trouble finding the McDonald's hamburger. I think they have them on every street corner. Okay, now, do you know what the capital of Japan is? Hmm? Right, Tokyo. Very good. Tokyo has 9.1 million people. And they, uh, those Japanese people are highly forced workers. I mean, they just work, work, work. And they are known to be the smartest, most intelligent people in the world. And they, they, uh, they have experienced the largest earthquake in history. An 8.9 triggered the Fukushima nuclear uh, disaster. And um, anyway, you were right, Tokyo. Very good. So let's talk about the national, uh, the national flowers. These are the national flowers called the cherry blossom. In Japanese, it's called Sakura. And here they are, all in bloom. Aren't they beautiful? Now, like um, at the beginning of, uh, let's see, spring, and then it goes to autumn. Um, this is very big. They have the biggest festival, and people come from all over, and it's so, they just celebrate with gusto. There's so much going on. They have uh, live music on every corner. Everybody's playing live instruments. And they have oodles and oodles of food that goes on forever. And the, the, the park is full of people. And uh, it's just really a beautiful sight to see, I hear. And the foliage is beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. isn't that beautiful? Now we're gonna talk about uh, this beautiful famous mountain. It's called Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. And here's another another picture of Mount Fuji. And they have snow on Mount Fuji five months out of the year. And it is the tallest mountain for climbing. And the season is in July. And over 300,000 people climb that mountain because we hear that the sunrise is the most spectacular magnificent sight to see. Well, I wish I could go there, maybe someday. And anyway, the last time the volcano erupted, it was in the 1700s, 1707 to be exact. And what happens is there's underground, there's these bubbly, hot gases that starts to explode. And it comes up from the mountain and out and over and starts just gushing out and it's so hot it's the hottest thing you ever want to uh, can ever imagine it's called lava and here I have my little my little volcano I can show you this is what happens shake 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 all right, see all these bubbles, these hot bubbles? Look at that. And then they all come up in the middle of the mountain and they're just exploding. And then it falls over and it starts going. And you know, if you're ever near one that explodes, you have to run for your life because, yeah, we knew a lot of people that, that they had to run for their lives. Okay. Very fascinating. Volcanoes have always fascinated me. They have, um, how many do they have? They have 200 volcanoes, and 60 of them are still active, that still explode. Okay, let's talk about something fun, food. We're gonna talk about sushi, see? Now I know you all know what sushi is, probably. It's just very popular, very popular in Japan and very popular here in the States. And it's so much fun when you go into a sushi restaurant and you sit at a sushi bar and you can 
uh, watch the chef make your food right in front of you. And, and, and when he's through, he'll give you the plate right over the counter and, and you can take the plate right there and eat it. It's just so casual. It's just very nice, fun. So anyway, and it's not, it's not hard to make. It's very easy and I'm gonna show you kids. It's very exciting. Okay, you can have your mom and dad buy you some seaweed, package of seaweed, and this is what it looks like. And you can put it on the stove on a low flame. They can, they can do this for you. And then uh, flip it over, and then you put it on this sushi mat, and we're going to put rice over it. But let me just show you this um, very special basket that they use and they fill it up with Japanese rice, and they put a lot of water in there, and they soak it overnight. And then, in the morning, it turns into that sticky, sticky white rice. Oh, it's so delicious. And then you can start pouring, putting, spreading all the rice on, on the seaweed. This is the fun part. You can put whatever you like. If you don't like fish, you can use chicken, you can do vegetables. Uh, you could use cucumbers, avocado, uh, whatever you have in your kitchen that you like. And then you roll it up, make it into like a little log, and here are some pictures I want to show you. This is so much fun. Look at the spread of sushi. Isn't that great? That's a good looking dinner. Mm. And here is some tofu. I love tofu. And some green onions. Mmm, look at that. And here's some meat. They don't eat too much meat, but they do eat meat sometimes. And here are some fish eggs stuffed in the celery. And I see some crab legs. And, ah, have you ever had their soup? It's called miso soup. It's delicious. And here's a fish. And I see some tuna, vegetables, shrimp, rice, yummy. Is it lunchtime yet? Is it sushi time? Okay. Now, here's some other little goodies that they always you always see when you go into a Chinese or Japanese restaurant. It's um, little saucers, and this is what they put the sauce in so you can dunk your food into it and it's just it's just all fun and when it's time to go they give you these to go boxes aren't they cute does this look familiar to you and if you order a shirley temple they always give you a little umbrella and they put it in your cup it's just all fun let's all go to the beautiful Hey kids, I hope you like my song and I'll be back. I think I'll pick South Africa next. So I'll meet you all in South Africa maybe next week. Sayonara. <laughs>
to the garden of tomorrow where we'll meet.